Hi guys, my name is Danny and welcome to my first mod review of the mod Rotary Craft by Breaker. Rotary Craft is an industrial mod, like industrial craft or build craft, but it is quite different and quite interesting as well. So yeah, let's get started with the basics and the power production. When you first start the mod, you might to get yourself a couple of things. Number one, you should get the handbook. The handbook contains information about all the different machines and items that you can get in the mod. And you'd want to get yourself a screwdriver. The screwdriver is very important and I will show you its use in a second. Now the basics to this mod is quite different to the basics of other industrial mods. When you first open the book you'll be greeted with a lot of information about all the different aspects of the mod. Power in this mod can be broken down into torque which is the strength and the angular velocity which is the speed. Different machines in the game might require higher torque than speed or higher speed than torque and it is possible to switch between the two because power is torque multiplied by angular velocity so if you have one you can double the others. That formula is going to be quite useful later on in this mod so that should be kept in mind uh, throughout. In different sections you can get different information about everything in the mod. Machine tears is important. There are different machines that require different amount of power which is further broken down into different amount of speed and different amount of torque. The highest amount of power being a lot and you're going to have to power it with very high tier engines. If you flick through the different pages you'll get to see all the different machines that you can build later on. So let's get started with the power production. This is the DC engine. The DC engine produces just over one kilowatt of power, which is broken down into four newton meters of torque with a 256 radians per second of speed. The DC engine is the most basic of engines in this in this mod. And um, you make it like so on the work table using steel, which I'll explain how to get later. To turn on the to turn on the DC engine, you only need to supply it with the red zone signal. Now to check how much power it is producing, we stick in a dynamometer. When you put down a machine, you get to see these two colored boxes. The green is the input and the red is the output. With the dynamometer, we get to see how much power is indeed being produced and we can see that it is the amount of power that is listed in the handbook, which is just over one kilowatt of power with four newton meter torque and 256 radians per second speed. There are a few machines that require uh, a very small amount of power and the DC engine is quite useful for those. Next, we have the AC engine. The AC engine is quite a jump up from the DC engine, but I've put them together for a reason. The AC engine produces 131 kilowatts of power, which is broken down into 512 newton meters of torque and 256 radians per second speed. The DC engine and the AC engine don't require fuel to function. They only require a redstone signal. But uh, an AC engine, unlike a DC engine, requires an alternating uh, signal. We can give it the alternating signal using a couple of things. We can either use a redstone comparator and redstone. 
but for easiness sake I'm going to use a redstone claw from a different mod and after we put in a shaft core inside the AC electric engine it starts producing power as you can see from the noise and the spinning we stick on a dynamometer and we can see that it is indeed producing the amount that is listed of course unlike the DC engine the AC engine varies its power and speed but not its torque you make the AC engine like so again in a work table Next, we move on to the wind turbine. The wind turbine produces just over 4 kilowatts of power with a torque of 4 newton meters and quite a high speed of just over a thousand radians per second. The guidebook says that it needs to be at least 128 blocks above the ground for it to work at its maximum efficiency, but I have noticed from testing that it works just fine as well on the ground as we can see right now it is not producing any power but that is because the wind turbine cannot work if there are blocks directly in front of it up to 16 blocks away if we break the cactus we can see that it is indeed starting and that it is indeed producing quite a few quite a bit of power. The wind turbine is made like so in a work table. Next we have the steam engine which produces just over 16 kilowatts of power with a speed of 512 radians per second and a torque of 32 newton meters. Like the engines before this, we do actually need to feed it some items, specifically some water, and give it a source of heat. The best way to give it heat is using direct fire, and then we just feed some water into its slot. This meter at the side is, is its temperature, and when the temperature reaches a proper, when the, when the temperature reaches high enough, the engine will start making power. Be careful with the fire, naturally, and we will catch up to the steam engine just in a second. The steam engine is made like so, again in a work table. All the all the recipes for all the different machines can be gotten directly from the handbook as we can see the color slowly changes from green to yellow to red if the steam engine reaches a very high temperature for example if you start using lava then the steam engine will explode so it is much better to use fire. As you can see the steam, steam engine has started producing power and if we stick on a dynamometer we can see that it is indeed producing power. Next we move on to the performance engine. The performance engine produces just over 262 kilowatts of power with a torque of 256 newton meters and a speed of just over a thousand radians per second. The performance engine does require fuel in the form of ethanol crystals. However, if you put in some other items, that is redstone, gunpowder or blaze powder, it does produce more power with redstone giving the least amount of power and blaze powder giving the most. 
The performance engine also requires a water coolant that you can supply to it using pipes. You basically put the crystals in the machine and off it goes. As you can see from the animation and the sound that it is going. If we stick on a dynamometer, we can see that it is indeed producing power. As you can see, the amount of power it is producing is decreasing quite quickly. That is because its fuel is running out. If we give it more fuel, it will produce more power. But as we haven't put in any more fuel, it will keep decreasing until it stops making any power. The performance engine is made like so, again in a work table. As we can see, the items needed to produce it have become quite complicated. But again, they are all made out of steel, which I will get to in a later video. Next, we move on to the hydrokinetic engine. The hydrokinetic engine produces a max torque of just over 16,000 newton meters, a maximum speed of 32 radians per second, and maximum power of just over 524 kilowatts. The hydrokinetic engine, if set up properly, can produce a lot of torque and a lot of power. For it to work at its best, you need to have water drop onto it from 64 blocks above of it. The engine can only work counterclockwise, not clockwise, so you have to let the water drop to the left of you. And when you do so, and if you do so correctly, it will produce a lot of power. If all the hydrokinetic engines are working at their best, you can chain them together to produce a lot more power. The hydrokinetic engine is made like so in a work table. Next we move on to the microturbine. The microturbine produces a torque of 16 newton meters, a speed of 131,000 radians per second, and a power output of 2 megawatts, that's 2 million watts, which compared to the hydrokinetic engine which only produces half a megawatt. So we can see that is actually a lot of power. But again it produces little to no torque. To work the microturbine we need jet fuel and a fuel line. I'm also going to put in an engine control unit because that works as an impromptu tank underneath. We can see it spinning and if we stick on the dynamometer you can see that it is producing a lot of power at a very high speed. The power will keep going as it's around the power output of the hydrokinetic engine at the moment until it reaches 2 megawatts. The micro turbine is made like so in a work table. Next we move on to the gas turbine which produces just over a thousand newton meters of torque with a speed of 65,000 radians per second and a power output of 67 megawatts, 67 million watts which compared to the two megawatts that the micro turbine produces you can see is a lot of power. The gas turbine also requires fuel to function and we can put in the fuel using the fuel lines. Like so.
As we can see, the gas turbine is spinning and using up its fuel. If we stick a dynamometer behind it, we can see that it is producing a lot of power and it's only increasing. The gas turbine is quite dangerous and quite loud. I'm safe right now because I'm a creative, but if I was a survivor, I would be killed instantaneously if I was standing in front of the machine. The gas turbine is made like so, a work table. Next we move on to the solar tower. The solar tower produces a torque of just over a thousand newton meters with scalable speed and scalable power. As you can see, I had to destroy the gas turbine because it was making a lot of noise and it would have continued making a lot of noise until it ran out of fuel, which would have taken some time. The solar tower, like I said, is quite versatile because you can use it to produce a lot of power. We need a few things to get started. What I have under there is called a bevel gear which is made like so. I will explain it in more detail in my next video. The bevel gear is basically used to turn power produced by different machines by 90 degrees. As we can see here, the power output of this machine is downwards. With the bevel gear, I can change it by 90 degrees to this way, as you can see from the red block here. All I need to do is hook up my dynamometer here and we will see the power increase in just a tiny bit. What the solar tower needs to function, first of all, is a supply of water, which I'm using this drum for, and this pipe. After that, we need to put on some solar mirrors like so. As you can see the solar bearer sort of moves to get the best angle between the solar tower and the sun which is somewhere. If we see here the dynamometer it is not producing any power so far. What we need to do is stick on another tower on top of that. If you see now that it is producing just over 4 kilowatts of power. If you want to produce more power we can either put in more towers on top of it or we can stick on more mirrors. Let's see both of those. As you can see I stuck on another tower and the power doubled to 8. If I stick in another mirror the power increases to 12. Throw in another mirror, goes to 16. As you can see with every mirror it goes up by 4. And it doubles with every solar power. Tower, sorry. Just like so. We just put in more mirrors and we can see the power increasing. And with that, I have covered all the basics on the power production. In my next video, I will cover power transfer and some of the more basic machines. Thanks for watching and um, hope to see you again. Thanks.